Hi everyone, in this video we're going to talk a little bit about precision and accuracy and then we're going to talk a little bit about significant figures or significant digits. Let's talk about the difference between precision and accuracy. You're going to hear both words in science and they have very, very specific meanings. Accuracy is how close a measured value is to the correct value. So, for example, the acceleration of gravity is 9.8 meters per second squared. If you get answers that are 9.79 and 9.82 and 9.81, you are dealing with an experiment that is quite accurate. So it's how close something is to the measured or the accepted value. Precision is how repeatable the results are. Let's say you're measuring the acceleration of gravity and you get 10.7, 10.75, 10.69. These all are very, very repeatable, and that means it's very, very precise, but they're not accurate. They are quite a bit off. And that's the difference between this concept of precision and accuracy. Now, one of the ways that we can describe how accurate a measurement is, how exact we know that number is, is by how many significant figures, and some books, some authors call this significant digits, are actually used. Now that is basically the number of numbers that we write down whenever we measure something. So let me give you an example. Um, how accurate something is measured is based to a great extent on the measuring tool. If I had a ruler, I had a one foot ruler, and I wanted to measure the diameter of an atom, well, the ruler is probably not a good choice. This is just doesn't have the, the fine gradations of size necessary for measuring an atom. If I had my one foot ruler and I was going to try and measure the distance between the Earth and the Moon, I'd be at this a really, really long time. And we have better measuring tools. Today we have lasers um, and we have sort of light reflecting objects that do a great job at measuring that distance. Excuse me. <coughs> Sorry about that. So there's two ways that we deal with significant figures. One is when we are working in lab and actually measuring things, and the other one is math. So let's talk about the, I think, the funnest part, and that is how do you actually measure something. Okay, when you measure a value, you are allowed to record all of the digits you are certain about, plus, and this is flabbergast some people, you are allowed to add one more guesstimated digit. Let's take a look and measure this right here. Okay, I've got something that is about that long. So what am I going to say the length of that is? Okay, do we all agree it's over 41 centimeters long? So I'm going to say 41. I'm pretty certain about that. Point one, two, three, four, five, um, six. I'm going to call that point six centimeters. And here's where it gets a little, a little crazy. Let me get my eraser here because I, I got messy and I wrote where I shouldn't have write. Wrote. Okay. Now, I want to also then I am allowed to guess one more digit right there. One more digit. So I'm going to say. 41.65. Now you might look at that and say, no, Mary, you're full of beans. I think it's 41.66. And somebody else might say it's 41.64. Truth, these are all correct because you are allowed all of your certain digits plus one more guesstimated digit. So how many significant figures or significant digits are in this number? One, two, three, four. Right, let's try another one. This is a pH meter. So if this red line happens to be the pH meter, let's take a look. It's more than six and less than seven. And this is one, two, three, four, five. So each one of these represents 0.2. So what does this pH meter say? It's more than 6.246. I'm going to say it's 6.8. Can I guess one more digit? Yeah, because I'm pretty certain about the 6.8. 
So I'm going to say 6.81. Now you might say 6.82. Your colleague might say 6.83. All of those are acceptable. How many sig figs? Three. Here's what's not acceptable. You cannot say 6.815. You can't split the difference. Why? Because with significant digits, it's the understanding that these are positively 100% known, and this is the only one with a guesstimate. So you can't have one more digit out here because it indicates that you know this number to a greater accuracy than our equipment allowed you to measure. Let's do another one. Volume. Now, if you've ever looked in a graduated cylinder and you've looked at liquid, remember it's supposed to be measured at the bottom of the meniscus. And so if I look at this, the bottom of my meniscus is right here. All right, let's take a look at this. 50, we all agree it's 50, 51, 52, 53, 54, 55, and then there's 60. So 51, 52, 53. It's over 53, but it's not 54. So I'm going to say I'm certain of 53, and I'm allowed to guess one more. So 51, 52, uh-oh, did Mary make a mistake? I think she did. 51, 52, I'm certain of. 52 point, I can guess this one, 0.8. And the same thing, you might have said 52.9, and that's okay. How many sig figs? One, two, three significant figures. Now, how do you determine significant figures when you actually just read numbers in problems or homework or things like this? Here's some rules. Preceding zeros don't count. So, in this situation where you've got something smaller than zero, these do not count. And so how many sig figs? Two. If you have zeros in the middle of a number, like this zero and those numbers, those zeros, you count them. So how many sig figs? One, two, three, four, five, six. Trailing zeros, the ones trailing meaning at the back end, can or cannot be significant. But how do you tell? Well, if you have numbers that are bigger than zero, there should be a dot after the number to indicate it's significant. So 5,000 dot means I have four significant figures. If I just have 5,000, no dot, how many significant figures do I have? One. Well, what if one of these is significant and the others are not? That's why scientific notation was invented. In scientific notation, I could write this number 5 times 10 to the third, if I have one sig fig, or I could write it as 5.0 times 10 to the third, if I have two sig figs, or 5.00 times 10 to the third, if I have three sig figs. When in doubt, in a situation like this where there's any ambiguity, there's any confusion, scientific notation will save your bacon. Now, if you have numbers that are smaller than zero, only write down the zero if it's significant. So if I have this number written down and it's the whole number is smaller than zero, um, then this is going to be smaller than zero just sounds wrong, doesn't it? Smaller than one? Let's say smaller than one. That just sounded very wrong, whatever I said there. Okay, if this is smaller than one, you write down the number only if it's significant. So 0.9710, I have four sig figs. But what if I only had three sig figs? 0.971 would indicate I only had three significant digits. Exact numbers have an unlimited number of significant fi figures. What do I mean by an exact number? There are exactly 12 objects in a dozen. There are exactly 60 seconds in one minute. That's an exact number. So does this limit number of significant digits? Not at all, because this is exact. It's a counting number. If you count something with counting numbers, they have unlimited sig figs. All right, this is another one of those things. I'd like to have you hit pause, try and count how many sig figs are in each one of these, and then come back and we'll do them together. Okay, here we go. So this one has five. This has three. Preceding zeros don't count. This has one. This has two. This has three. If it's a trailing zero, don't write it down unless it's significant. 
this three, see how easy scientific notation is? This one, one, science, one significant figure. Two, five, and three. How do I know this is three? See that little dot? That is an indicator. All of those in front are significant. What about when we do math with, with significant figures? And you're going to do math with Siggy Figgies in labs, in homework problems, all sorts of situations. There is a lot of math rules that go with significant figures. This is not a math class. And because of that, I'm going to stick to, here's the basic, if you remember one thing about sig figs, this is the thing. You can't end up with more digits than you begin with. Um, basically, because what it does is an indicator of more accuracy than you had. And we don't need that in science. You have to indicate the accuracy of the numbers you're dealing with. So let me give you an example, and I'm going to grab my calculator. Okay, if I have a rectangle that's 3.9 centimeters times 4.5 centimeters times 3.21 centimeters, I get a volume of 56.3355 cubic centimeters. That should be a decimal point. 56.3355 cubic centimeters. So how many significant figures do I put on my final answer? Well, this has two, this has three, this has three. My final answer can have no more than my least accurate piece of data. And my least accurate number has two, so this number has to be rounded off to 56 cubic centimeters. Students who are just learning physics or not don't do an awful lot of math sometimes look at this and they go, but, 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 my calculator put that number out there, so it must be important. It's not. Matter of fact, it's wrong and it's very distracting because it indicates that you know the volume of this thing out to four places past the decimal, and you don't. You just, you really don't know that. So you have to make sure your answer corresponds to the original data that you use in your calculation. I call all of these extra numbers that are floating out here, I call them calculator diarrhea. And calculator diarrhea, because of the fact that they come out of the calculator, but they're not terribly good for much. Okay, that will do this one, and I will see you next time. Thanks, guys. Bye-bye. <laughs>